Hey, it's Flummox Kid here. Thanks for checking out my video. Have you ever wondered about the Magic the Gathering artists that make our favorite game come to life? Well, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for when new videos go live. Also, leave a comment with your favorite artists and we'll definitely feature them in an upcoming video. Now shuffle up and let's go. GG. This would be Zoltan Boros. Now, they've teamed up with a couple, uh, with some other artists before to do some of the more popular artwork, but they've also done some on their own. Uh, some one right off the top of the, the bat. Let me uh, get my, my card chat here you already. Know, is. Uh, Academy Ruins. There we are. Uh, I definitely played this a lot in uh, Modern when that was a thing. It still kind of is, but I don't play Modern anymore. Uh, since it, uh, for a blue and a colorless, you can return target artifact in your graveyard at the top of your library. I did also play this a lot in the... Uh, in my artifacts and enchantments commander deck, uh, Hannah the Navigator uh, was uh, ship's navigator was my general because that was one of the first foil cards that I had ever opened, and I really enjoyed it. And it was kind of fun because I really didn't use it for uh, the commander damage ability, but I did uh, use it for uh, just recurring all sorts of crazy stuff. I bring basically bring up a. Uh, make a, a, a defense with all enchantments and artifacts and then turn them into creatures and make them uh, do my bidding. So that was pretty fun that it uh, with Academy Ruins. Uh, the next one is another one from uh, Lorewind Times originally that uh, most folks might know is Aether Snipe. Aether Snipe, depending on how you like pronouncing the A-E, uh, um, diphthong there but uh it's a nice uh bounce because uh what's, what has the ability called evoke where it's sort of like the um uh like croxa and euro now where unless it comes from your graveyard uh it's sacrificed but here you could actually get the choice on whether you want to sacrifice it so if you need to play it earlier it's costs a little bit less uh, it's normally a five and a blue to play full power for a four four creature but uh, if you need to just get something off the board uh, you can evoke it for uh, one blue blue i believe that can only be played uh, sorcery speed or creature cast speed but uh, it definitely did some work uh, for what it needed to do. Another card that uh, Zoltan Boris has uh, joined up, she teamed up and did some work on, is another friend of mine from way back in the day, uh, Avenger of Zendikar. Uh, usually you'd play this in some sort of ramp deck, and I enjoyed uh, playing this in my uh, Titan um, ramp deck back when uh, original Zendikar was was out. For a 5 green green, you get a 5-5. Five, five. But he also comes in with a 0-1 green creature for each uh, land that you control. And then it has landfall for whenever a land enters the battlefield, each, uh, each plant creature gets a plus one, plus one counter. So combination of him and uh um what was it the titan um oh i'm gonna be i feel totally blanking out on the, the titan that would play along with the green one primeval there we are primeval titan uh he would get go get the lands these plant creatures would get huge and then after a while you're just swinging with uh with some giant plants um uh, to know that he does not only does uh, green stuff, but he also does blue stuff. Uh, we do. Uh, they were also 
responsible for the artwork on Azorius Charm. Uh, this came out in the Return to Ravnica, the second time we went to Ravnica Planet. And it's a uh, instant for one blue, one white. And you get a choice. Either all your creatures get lifelink until the end of turn. You can draw a card. Or you can put a target attacking creature on top of its owner's library. So it uh, really helped you out there. It would either draw, draw you a card, uh, gave you some life, or... Uh, bounce a creature that they're swinging into let's see from one of the newer sets i don't see this too much in standard but i have seen this a few times in the draft is bacon to a pie definitely feels a bit on theme there for two black black you can destroy a target creature and you create a food token so you basically cook uh, you cook their creature into a token or into a uh, food token. That's uh, that's kind of messed up, but <laughs> that's always pretty good. Let's see another one from the original uh, Ravnica sets is Blazing Archon. Now this is what they would call a finisher uh, for six white, white, white. You get a five, six flyer. And creatures can't attack you. That's that's pretty good. So basically, you just shut off any ability they can attack while this person, this card is out on the board. I like the uh, the feel of it. It definitely gives you a Boros feel. I always wonder if that is uh, intentional on uh, the naming of that, or if that's just the way it worked out. Uh, but we'll uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, another card that uh, Zoltan did is the Borderland Ranger. This is not the original artwork for it, but is from the uh, Everton Restored set, and it's it's pretty good. It's uh, I enjoyed playing these on some of the little green weenie decks. Uh, for two and a green, you get a two two. And when he enters the battlefield, you search your land for a basic land. And uh, we have seen this recently in the um, Explorers of Ixland set. It's no longer in uh, standard, but it was from recent times. So we might run across it a few times here and there in uh, Historic. Another one that uh, sort of fit uh, the name is the Boros Charm. It's a, for a white and a red, it's another one like the Azorius Charm. Gives you a choice. Uh, for instant speed, you can deal four damage to a target player. Uh, permanents you control are indestructible, which would be the white side of that. Or a target creature gains double strike until the end of turn. So it, uh, it gives you a feel of both the, uh, the white and the red side of it, as well as a combination of the two. Let's do one another standard cards right now. It's going to be a little trickier to see if I doesn't goof up my uh, my artwork box here. Is the Carnival Carnage card? It's a split card, so it might kind of wank up my uh, my thing here. Let's see if I can unlock this and uh, look at the artwork here. So I apologize for being so weird looking, but. Uh, Maybe I'll turn our head sideways like that way and see how this looks. Uh, definitely get the feel of the Rakdos and uh, definitely gives you a feel of fire, carnage, and mayhem. When I played, uh, when I did play Ma uh, Modern, I played, I started out playing. Uh, the living end deck and that was really helped along by the copper line gorge cards usually you had to keep make sure you kept uh get one of these in your opening hand or else you're kind of sunk because you need to get some stuff done first turn and it's a land but it only comes in tapped it comes in tapped if you have 
uh, unless you control two or few, few or less or two or less lands. There we go. I can speak well. So it helps you early game, not so much late game. So if you want to play a lot of stuff within the first few turns like you do uh, in modern, then that's what you need to be. Uh, and then you'd play a bunch of stuff to get that uh, to get that going. Now with the um, the Fay of Wishes was sort of designed upon uh, the card called Cunning Wish, and the uh, the artwork for a Judge promo as well as an online pro magic online promo was done by Zoltan and that is this right here uh, for a two and a blue you can choose an instant you own from outside the game reveal it and then put it in your hand and then remove and exile this card so it's sort of similar but I think uh, Faye actually lets you go for a sorcery as well so most of that is uh, either a burning wish or a cunning wish uh, are the the old style cards that you would uh, would sort of equate the Fey of Wishes to. The the next card uh, that you would probably see uh, we might see this not so much uh, in the next half, but it might be if we're playing it. That'd be sweet is uh, standard legal and that is the devout decree that uh for a white and color or for colorless on a white uh you can sorcery exile target creature or planeswalker that's red and then scry one that's in the sideboard of the azorius deck so if we need to uh fave wishes then that's what you would probably want to get if you're playing against maybe something similar like that mayhem devil deck next one is another one of the charm series from the second visit to ravnica this one being from gate crash is for a blue and a black you can choose one counter i apologize counter target sorcery spell that's the blue side uh, destroy target creature with power two or less that's the black side and then you can look at the top three cards of target player's library, put one back, and the rest into their graveyard. So that's uh, that's pretty pretty juicy there. So you get to look ahead to see what your, play, your opponent's going to draw the next turn. Another one we've played a bit in the uh, historical round is the, uh, the Dire Fleet Daredevil. I've had plenty of fun with this taking uh, Esper's Thought Erasures and using them on themselves. Uh, I never thought this would be kind of a useful card when it was in Standard, but it really come into its own in the, uh, in the Historic with the Mono Red deck. Let's see how far back. I usually try to get the, the oldest print on some of these cards, and here we go. Uh, Next one was from another one from the original Ravnica, so I guess uh, they've definitely found their own in uh, the Ravnica blocks, is Electrolyze. Uh, one blue or red deals two damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures or players, and you draw a card. So it's it's a almost a two-step version of the charms. You can either two shock something or or and you draw a card. So you can you get a little bit of both. Well, let's see. Another one I used uh, for when it came to, I believe, when I did use this for a while in my modern uh, affinity deck, was the Elixir of Immortality. Uh, for one, it's a cheap artifact, costs one. And then for two and tap, you gain five life, shuffle this, and then your graveyard into the library. So if you're playing long game with the affinity deck usually it's not designed to do that so on the sideboard you get to uh, uh, 
you get to uh, sort of rebuild your deck and uh, try uh, try to see how that works out there. Um, I was checking on something. I was noticing a lot of these uh, the other artists on some of the Zoltan Boros is another artist by the name of Gabor. I apologize for this. Zitsky? Zitsky? Let me see if that's uh, how that relates to uh, to Zoltan here. Um, looks like they're a, an artist duo. So although this is sort of featuring Zoltan Boros work, I think we'll also include uh, Gabor Zixai in there as well. According to their little bio here, uh, they're both Hungarian and they uh, <clears throat> they both in enjoy uh, doing some artwork together there. They've worked for uh, doing some work for our wizards as well as uh, um, I believe for Blizzard because they might have done some uh, World of Warcraft uh, Hearthstone stuff. So, uh, yeah, they'll definitely uh, include uh, Gabor Zixai, I apologize again, in the, uh, the notes and uh, make sure that we get uh, their, their credit as it is due as well. Because a lot of this artwork is a, was a team effort, much like this Elixir of Immortality here. Um, I'm trying to look for some other cards that I know I've used uh, recently or I've seen in rather regular use. Uh, continuing on with the um, the charm cycle, the other piece that uh, Zor uh, Zoltan did is the Golgari charm. The uh, that is the black green guild for an instant one of each color you can, all creatures get minus one minus one until end of turn that's the black side uh, destroy target enchantment that is the green side or regenerate which actually happens to be in both so that's where uh that one comes into play definitely got a nasty looking dude there it seems like death and life incarnate somehow uh but that that's how he uh that's how he works and uh, would, would not be complete without the gruel charm I thought I had that ready there we are and that is the red green for any folks unfamiliar with some of the guild names so for a red and a green you get an instant you get to choose one creatures without flying cannot block that's usually the red uh, actually it might be the green I'm not sure if it's just in a different mode there because usually can't block is a red and then gain control of all permanents you own is usually a red that war gruel charm deals three damage to each creature with flying now that's usually a green because um, they like for some reason they like to single out just flying stuff because they want to keep it on the ground and uh and keep it going like that now for the gruel folks playing standard now that is your gruel spell breaker and as long as it's your turn he has or isn't as long as it is your turn he has uh, hexproof and trample and he comes in with riot which means you get a choice of either putting a plus one plus one counter on him or uh giving him haste which is pretty good Especially for something that comes down turn three, swinging with a three-three haste, that is pretty rough to deal with. An older card that I really enjoyed. I'm gonna find out which when he started doing the artwork for it. Um, it looks like the first artwork that uh, Zoltan did was with uh, Gabor as well. It was for the uh, magic. 
10, or set 10, I don't even call that, 10th edition, there you go, was for the war, the card Incinerate. For a red and a colorless, you get an instant, deals 3 damage to target creature or player, and then creature dealt damage this way cannot be regenerated. They have not really used regenerated too much anymore, because uh, they felt it kind of overpowered a little bit. So they uh, sort of phase that out, but still, that's pretty good. That's just basically like a lightning strike now. So you can uh, definitely get up and uh, zap somebody for that. Uh, with the uh, charm series, the Is It Charm is the, the blue-red set, or uh, guild that is. For a blue and a red, you get an instant, choose one, counter target non-creature spell until it lets its controller plays, pays two. Sort of a mini mana leak. That's the blue side. Uh, or it can deal two damage to target creature. That's the red side, like a shock. Or you can draw two cards and then discard two cards. Now both red and blue have some sort of card discard mechanic, but unless you... Uh, the red side really only came into that more recently. Blue's always been around with a merfolk looter. It's been that's what looting is basically called. Um, you usually with looting, you draw the card first and then you discard. So if you draw a dud, you can toss that card. Now since red is more impulsive, you have to discard first and then draw a card. So that would not be as much on the red side, but red does, because red does usually doesn't get card draw at all. That's why whenever you get a lot of those red uh, uh, triggers, um, like those uh, satyrs we played with in Rule, that uh, you would have to discard first in order to draw. And if you don't have anything to discard, then you don't get it. So sometimes they've, instead of calling it looting, they call it rummaging, because uh, I think it's named after a goblin rummager. That might be what the what that is uh, called there. Uh, another piece that uh, Zoltan did with Gavor is uh, the Crozen Grip. This is an oldie but a goodie. This had an ability what they call Split Second, and so it's basically it came out in the Time Spiral series in the set and. They've, they've always understood how instant speed can be always countered with instance. But then they thought, maybe if we make something even faster than instance, let's try that. So that's what the split second ability is. So it's an instant, but it's faster than an instant. To the point where you can't even respond to it unless it's a, a, a mana ability. And... Basically, if you really, really need to get that artifact or enchantment off the board, this is what you use. Uh, it costs a little bit more than a normal enchant enchantment or artifact removal green spell. It's two in a green. So three is usually kind of expensive, but for a, basically an uncounterable uh, destruction, then it's, that's pretty good. I would definitely pay that all day. The another card is an oldie and a goodie. Uh, this was done for a Magic Online promo as well as a 2009 Judge promo. It was the Maze of Ith. They tried to make something similar to this um, in another Maze of uh, Acro or something of that nature, but it's a land. It doesn't make mana, but you untap target attacking creature and then prevent all combat damage would be dealt by and to that creature. So if you really need to get something to keep him off your butt, that what you need. You need to get throw them in the maze, they get lost in the maze of Ith, and then there they'll stay. Basically you can just keep that uh, that land, keep them in check uh, the entire time until they deal something about it. Uh, another charm from the Gate Crash set is the Orzov charm. That is the white and black uh, guild. 
For an instant, you choose one. Return target creature you control and all auras you control that are attached to it to their owner's hand. So if you need to get something off the board, that's usually probably the white side because they would be the more um, damage prevention or rescuing kind of ability. Uh, or you can destroy a target creature and you lose life equal to its toughness. That can get a little tasty when they have... Um, a big creature, but like I was saying earlier, that uh, your life total is a resource. And if you need to get that 5-5 five, five off the board, or else it's just going to beat you mercilessly, then you, you pay 2 mana and 5 life. I would do that. Or you can return a target creature con card with converted mana cost 1 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Uh, that's uh, definitely ores off. Uh, because they like uh, returning stuff. Sometimes a little white too, because uh, white can return stuff from the gra uh, graveyard to the uh, battlefield as well. Uh, another solo piece from Zoltan, we've seen a few times here, is the good old Pelt Collector. I haven't had too much experience with him other than in the uh, Boros Agro, not Boros, the Gruel Agro deck. Uh, but he's a he's a pretty good one here. He wants to uh, he definitely wants to make sure that he gets paid for all the giant animals that come out, as well as all the animals that uh, that when he dies can actually go and help. Let's see. I'm not sure if this was originally original art was done by this. Uh, no, but uh, starting with. Um, the Magic 15 2015 set, uh, Zoltan did the artwork for, it's been reprinted in standard in set 2020, is the Raise the Alarm. Make a couple dudes, real instant speed. I think that's pretty quick. Those guys are uh, ready to go and deal with uh, deal with it. Uh, I think then we might be almost getting to the end of the uh, the charm cycle here because we're getting towards the end of the alphabet. But uh, Rakdos Charm. We got a black and red for an instant. And you get uh, all cards from... You can exile all cards from a target player's graveyard. That's definitely the black side. Destroy target artifact. Uh, it could be the red side. Uh, reds usually destroys artifact. They don't do enchantments as much, but artifacts definitely. Or each creature deals one damage to its controller. So that's uh, that's definitely a, a Rakdos kind of self-inflicting uh, damage. Uh, so if you're playing against a lot of creatures, that's definitely something that will get them uh, will get them hurting for it. Another modern staple. That this was reprinted in uh, the uh, the Modern Masters, Masters 2015 set is Remand. It's a nice, nice counter spell for a blue and a colorless. And you can counter that target spell. If it's countered that way, you can put it into its owner's hand instead of into the graveyard. And you draw a card. So it's not a total counter, but it'll definitely get it off the board. And you draw a card, so it replaces itself, sort of. But you just have to make sure, you, hopefully, you got another turn, another card to deal with it the next time that uh, spell comes down. Um, and another one of the cards that we were just playing with in the, um, in the Timur Elementals deck is this guy, Scampering Scorcher. We saw how he worked. Uh, he's a three and a red, and he brings in two friends. They all get haste, and if you get a calamity out there, they uh, they do some damage there. So definitely uh, wreck your business. Selesnia charm is the Selesnia green white uh, charm from the Return to Ravnica set. For an instant, you can choose one target creature gets plus two plus two and gains trample. It's definitely the green side. Exile target creature with power 5 or greater. That's definitely the white side. And then create a 2-2 white knight creature with token in... Knight with token... Creature token with vigilance. Uh, that's usually probably the white side. 
Um, Green sometimes comes in with Vigilance stuff, especially for a 2-2. So they both can do that. So that's that's the combination of the two. And then we're getting towards the end here, we got another charm, the Simic Charm, which is, as you all know, the blue and green from uh, Gate Crash. For an instant, you get to choose one. Target creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. That's definitely the green side. Uh, permanents you control gain hex proof until the end of turn. That's the blue side. And then you return target creature to its owner's hand, which is also kind of blue. Green doesn't do that too much, but I'm sure it has in the past before. We'll do and gotta find some more uh, some more stuff. If you do, did ever have you have played in the uh, Ixalan stuff? Um, they are they're definitely Zoltan did some of the artwork for one of the treasure tokens. Make sure that comes up right there. We are. Um, I know they used for a while. They did a special event where each turn you got a um, treasure token. So that uh, wonder if that's something that they'll be bringing back there. But you definitely know the treasure tokens from there. Another. Land card, uh, combo team effort by Zoltan and Gabor, is the Vesuva. Originally from the Time Spiral. Now, I use that a lot in um, Velikut decks. This That was my buddy for when I first got back into Magic, crap, before original Zendikar came out. And when it comes into play... You may choose a land that you have in play, and then the Vesuva card becomes a copy of that. So you get some extra triggers for your Velikut stuff. And if you ever got a bunch of those out, you would be pretty much rocking their business there. And I believe this... Uh... And then got one more combo effort. Um, this is one that I, I've had in my in and out of my pauper cube for a while, so that's why it uh, gets in there for last. Because plus, it's the end of the, the alphabet for pieces. And that's white mane lion for a one and a color or colorless and a white. Uh, you get a two two with flesh, and then when it comes into play, return a creature you control to its owner's hand. So. You can save another creature or rescue another creature from getting eaten uh, by throwing this lion in there. And then he's uh, he's angry. He wants to get them. So, if you do have uh, an artist that you enjoy their work from, or in this case, a team effort of Zoltan and Gabor, uh, please let me know. And we'll uh, definitely talk about it on a future uh, video.